Hi, this is Roy from Tesla Owners US and we are here again and we want to show you this time the fuse, the main fuse, the ludicrous fuse and also a battery pack when the battery pack was lowered down from a Model S and it would be very interesting and we are, saying, we are glad that Pete is here with us again and his son and showing us that. Oh, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Here comes Peter. What is also an interesting thing is the car, even when the main screen doesn't work, the car still charges. And the car charges with 2 amp on 240 volt, right? 240 volt, 2 amp, right? Um, oh? This is on 120. 120? I oh, tried even. it on 240, but it, I think it might be the same thing. And what it does is it charges up to about 60 miles and then it shuts down. And it even charges up to maintain the battery, uh, that the battery is not getting dead, right? So, and from time to time they have to do that to maintain the battery because it's probably still the, the uh, uh, DC DC converter is still on to charge a 12 volt battery, right? It still sucks battery out, right? Yeah. yeah. Still sucks exactly. energy. So, and this takes a while until this is working, but. Uh, it is to maintain the battery and that not the battery goes dead. And it's the same with the other so car. So then we're coming to the battery package here. That is very interesting. So that's uh, the full battery package of the Model S being taken out. And maybe uh, Peter can tell us something about why you had to do that and why you wanted to do that and uh, take the battery pack out. Yeah, so um, the reason we pulled this pack, um, the battery was complaining about issues. Um, and we hadn't pulled a battery yet, so I thought it'd be a perfect time for us to start opening up batteries and see if we can figure out how they work um, and possibly do fixes on them like we do inside of the uh, modules up inside the car, cleaning them, replacing them, whatever they need. The pack has been pulled, and, and you, you were thinking that there is some intrusion in water in there, huh? Right. So um, it was complaining about issues inside of the battery, um, throwing sheet alarms. It, it was looking like there was a huge problem in the battery. Um, no. And um, it doesn't. It is not. No. It, it's uh, it's clean. In fact, it looks like the problem might have been condensation inside of the battery. It might have occurred. Ah. Uh, okay. So um, yeah. on the lid here. Yeah. This is Cortex, mm -hmm. um, but this is... Is this a sensor? It's not a sensor. It, um, it, it allows uh, air or ah. moisture to kind of come in and out. Oh, ah, okay. You might have something like that on your, um, your yeah. headlights. They'll have a, just a simple uh, sticker that's got a little texture to it, like yeah. fabric. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the same thing you've got here. Okay, good. So semi-permeable, um, and more than likely this seems to be the area where water can get into the pack, either via the air, um, or if the pack sits submerged, that's where we've heard that this is likely a uh, ingress point for the water to get into the pack. Luckily, it doesn't look like ours was necessarily um, ingress from water from there, but there definitely appears to be some moisture um, inside of the pack mm -hmm. that could have probably caused some problems. And it's just um, like we see on the boards in the car or on the connectors in the car, you have a little bit of corrosion, um, and then once you clean that off and it stops um, creating shorts or other issues internally, mm -hmm. those errors go right away. Okay. So, you know, I would say, I think voltage is way off, temperatures... And then I'll show you also some pictures around the battery itself. So now we're going to look at the battery and the battery pack. And this are... Oh. For reference, that 74 in parallel, 6 in series, 444 cells, cells per module. Per module. And we have 16 modules in the battery pack. So that is the big one, right? That's yes. mighty in 85 or 90 or so. Or? Okay, no. okay, and then what you can see here is our two packs here with that hump. And then there are two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 16 battery packs. And you actually lowered that battery down. No, 
you lifted the car up, genau. right? Then you put the bolts out, took the bolts out, and then you lowered the car down. Oh, that uh, then you and then uh, you put it on the stuff we pulled off. Yes. Um, this is all the hardware for removing oh, yeah. a battery. So, this is the bolts that hold the battery into the car. Mm -hmm. These are all of the bolts, nuts, everything that's used to remove the lid. And Ooh, the good that you have it in those boxes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So we've labeled everything. In fact, this guy's backwards. We've even got on the lid some markings, one, two, A, B, um, so we know exactly yeah. where everything goes. Super. And then um, inside of the, so this is the lid here. Yeah. Um, and you can see on this one, um, on the paint here, there's little dots. I don't know if you can see them with the light. Yeah. But water's gotten underneath the paint, and it started to corrode the aluminum underneath. Yeah. So if you were to chip this away, you'll find like this white corrosion that you're seeing in a lot of these places. Um, that side of this is nothing more than a few um, aluminum ribs, and it's quite a thin piece. Good. Oh, and, and this one is... So this is the white mat here that yeah. sits on top of the battery. Yeah. Um, what you have here is uh, ceramic material. That's this white uh, mesh here. And then just below it, or technically on top, this is actually backwards. You see this black mat? <coughs> this is an intumescent. So should um, the battery go thermal, yeah. you have the... Um, ceramic layer here that's going to act as a heat shield. If that heat gets through the ceramic, it's going to hit this intumescent. And what an intumescent does is when it gets hot, it expands and um, the density goes way down. So uh, heat can't transfer through it as easily. So it acts as another heat barrier. The so let me show you also that you can test those. You, you should be careful for that one. But these are little caps there on the top and the, and the, at the end. And that should provide how many volts? Um, uh, we're gonna find out. It's volt in DC, right? Yes, 21 I think is what most of them are sitting at right now. So, okay. one bus fire, the other one. At 21.75 volt, okay. Then the whole package is in 21.75 multiplied by 16, the 300 and what some some sim 344 volts. 344 volt and it can be higher if they're charged higher but it's exactly. that's pretty not good charged up. that's put it's not they're not fully charged up and they, I think when they're fully charged up they're around 380 volt or something like that um, yeah around three uh, 400 400 even mm -hmm. yeah okay so uh, that is a very interesting part now let's put the lid on top of it to be safe yes that's what I want to show you as well this is a regular standard fuse and you can take that standard fuse out and it should be taken out so there's no power going through and I show you also a ludicrous fuse this is a ludicrous fuse there are two regular fuses here and on, on the other side there are there's the connector fuse, the pyro fuse and then on this side there's a little board and which constro controls here there's a lithium battery in there all the way down there. Yeah, that makes a difference between a ludicrous speed, one of the portions of making a difference between a ludicrous speed and regular power speed.